nuclear explosions, near-threatened sharks, citizen scientists, and illegal fishermen have all come together to reveal a fascinating story. A story about how these unlikely themes ultimately led to a discovery that could help protect marine species across the planet. This is Bikini Atoll, a chain of 23 islets strung around a deep central lagoon. Remote Bikini is one of the Marshall Islands. And if the name Bikini Atoll sounds familiar, that's because between 1942 and 1958, this tropical paradise was actually a US nuclear testing site. Fire. A total of 67 tests were carried out, including the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the United States. Codenamed Castle Bravo, this hydrogen bomb was 1,000 times more powerful than the bomb that fell on Hiroshima. The scientists working on it made a miscalculation, and in the end, it had a yield of 15 megatons of TNT. Turns out that particular bomb was an absolute beast. It uh, was twice the yield they thought it would be. That was Patrick Douglas, a film producer and diver who helped put together an investigative expedition in 2015 to study sharks in the Marshall Islands. Very few people actually come and visit this region because of the threat of radiation exposure. As such, the area is now home to a high concentration of several threatened shark species and is, in fact, one of the world's largest shark sanctuaries. Patrick wanted to visit here because he was curious to learn more about how marine life had rebounded after numerous nuclear explosions. So he set out to tag grey reef sharks, a keystone species that is now thriving in the area. Alongside Patrick's film crew were marine conservationists, and that included Philippe Cousteau, grandson of the legendary Jack Cousteau, and Philippe's wife, Ashlyn. How can all this life return after this devastation, and specifically with sharks? These reef sharks that we had heard rumors of uh, being in such abundance in these islands that were in, annihilated during the nuclear testing, reef sharks are, are non-migratory species. And our question was, how is it possible for these sharks to repopulate these islands? Something didn't add up. A total of 17 sharks were fitted with a tag on their fin, allowing the team to start collecting important data. These new generation of satellite tags uh, basically record what the sharks are doing on a daily basis. They give us um, an, a complete look at, at what the shark was doing, what depth it was going to, what speed it was traveling. After eight months of data collection, this citizen science experiment found that the sharks were actually moving from atoll to atoll across stretches of deep ocean, something obviously rarely seen in non-migratory species. This exciting and potentially groundbreaking discovery could give clues as to how marine life might have repopulated Bikini Atoll. But then some of the tags began to produce peculiar data. They started moving around uh, in straight zigzag patterns west, far out into deep ocean water towards the Leyte Gulf and Bay Bay port in the Philippines. The tags were exhibiting the kind of movement that a longline fishing vessel would would uh, conduct. It turns out that some of the sharks had indeed been caught by illegal fishing vessels, most likely for their fins which can be sold for a high price on the Chinese market. Illegal fishing is a huge problem worldwide, contributing to the depletion of fish stocks on a massive scale and costing the global economy between 10 and 23 billion dollars each year. Fishing vessels are often required by maritime authorities to carry a digital tracker called an Automatic Identification System, or AIS for short. This tracker allows authorities to identify and monitor a ship's position and course, but some vessels have found a way around it. For example, in Hong Kong, you can go buy a $100 box that attaches to your AIS unit, and it tells waiting satellites that you're somebody else and you're somewhere else. Though marine sanctuaries like the Marshall Islands try to enforce their boundaries, it can be difficult. As an island nation, they have very limited finances. Unfortunately, that means illegal vessels can sail into places like Bikini Atoll and take whatever they want. But Patrick believes that tags like the one his crew used could help prevent this, as illegal fishing vessels may not be looking out for this kind of technology. He suggests that using tag data to catch a few vessels could be enough of a deterrent to stop others from coming back. You know, these vessels are worth anywhere from five to ten million dollars. You take three or four or five of these out and, you know, 
all of a sudden this area becomes a, a very insecure area for them to operate in. Ideally, if citizen scientists tag and track marine species around the world, it could help track and arrest illegal fishing vessels who hunt those species. The technology is already here. All we need are the people to do it. What's missing is the will and the next generation of really enthusiastic technologists who are looking at this problem out of the box. We do have an opportunity here to, to affect change. And it's not like we have to design new technology to do it. We just have to repurpose the stuff that we have now. You can help conserve sharks right now if you head to sharkweek.com. Just click through to the Save Sharks page and join Discovery and Oceana to support legislation that will help ban the buying and selling of shark fin products in the US. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe.